All right, in this video, we're going to continue and on with, this is part, I think, seven now of the KOWP for Beginners. And to recap, um, before we jump into this, we're going to make a weather piece for our uh, KOWP wallpaper over here. Yes, this looks a little bit different than how it did in the last video, but what I've done is I've gone in, I've done a few dynamically uh, changing of colors. Uh, that's covered in part six of the KOWP for beginners and somewhere right around this mark the 929 mark give or take a few seconds or minutes is when I start talking about ways that you can dynamically change colors um, in this case I did it based on the time of day but you can apply this to so much more and we're going to talk about that a little bit in this video uh, also um, you know in part four make sure you've watched this too where I talked about a little bit of coding here where we can get get the time to display just hours, just minutes, just the a.m. or p.m., how to shorten our names up for the day of the week, the month of the year, and stuff like that, because uh, we're going to be doing some of those things, uh, more coding, if you will, inside of this uh, part seven. But uh, make sure you've watched all these videos up until this point, because we will be seeing this screen quite a bit more in this video. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, like I said, this looks a little bit different than how it did in part six, but I still have the date and time. Uh, what I did is I got rid of the AM, PM. I know it already talked about it, but I like the look of this a lot better. Um, I still had that same stack group everything, but what I've done is I've just created a vertical, a vertically centered stack that has this up top and this at the bottom. Um, where I had the text 752, well, of course it says 746 because it's not updating. The bottom stack simply has the month, the day, uh, the month of the week, the day of the month, and the month of the year. And that's right down there. Um, I still have two different global fonts. I have a global font for my numbers and a global font for my text. I still have all of this stuff inside of an overlap group because of this rectangle. Um, I could have easily vertically stacked this rectangle inside of the, the stack group. However, uh, it was spacing it out a little bit too much to my liking. So I chose to keep it as an overlap group. That way I can take this rectangle here and I still can position this uh, without having to worry too much. Like I got the bottom padding set, but notice I can still overlap that bar right there with the uh, date and time. Notice here it's overlapping you know, the month and the day. But you could not do that had you had this rectangle inside of a stack group. It would keep everything separated. But nonetheless, there we go. Now, um, for now, I'm not getting into the animations piece, but what I'm gonna do here, I'm done with this. So what I wanna do is I don't wanna see this right now because I wanna work on my weather piece. Oh, and by the way, I did take that overlap group and I just centered it right smack in the middle of the screen. Um, I think in an earlier video, I had this entire overlap group uh, positioned near, you know, near the top or something like that, uh, maybe with a little bit of adjusting. But I don't want to see this thing. So what can we do? If you have an overlap group or a stack group, um, you can go to the layer option. I'm inside my date and time. I go to layer, and I just don't want to see this right now. So visible, I'm just going to click on uh, never. And it's going to take it away because right now I want to focus on the weather piece. So let's go back to root. We have nothing showing except for our black background. And let's create a, I'm going to create an overlap group, but it's going to be full of a lot of stack groups too. So overlap group, and I'm going to call this thing weather. Now we're going to get into quite a bit of, not advanced coding in this video, but definitely some uh, uh, basics of coding. So weather, inside of weather, what we want to do is let's look at, let's build a, um, a forecast, okay? And I'll come back at the end and, and do, a, uh, you know, today's weather. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll go ahead and do today's weather right now. Um, so inside of weather, i tell you what, let's go ahead and add some text and let's get the temperature. So... Um, here's our text. Let me make this a little bit bigger. And let's go ahead and get the temp. So I don't need any of this stuff. And if we scroll through our text, our function, let's go to weather info. And this is where you can get certain things. Um, let's do, I'm, I'm going to say, okay, I want the temperature and I want the condition. So temperature, I'm going to tap on that. And suppose you don't even really want to see the Fahrenheit or Celsius in your case. All we have to do is delete everything up until right there. 
Notice it deleted the Fahrenheit. So we got 62 degrees. Now I'm going to space and. So notice and showing up up here. And I want to see what the current condition is. So there's the current condition. So 62 degrees and fair. If you want to see more, that'll be totally fine. All right. Uh, let's switch this global font. I'm going to use my words global font that are letters is what I called it. Um, you know, that's what I had picked earlier in an earlier video. And now let's put a uh, icon beneath it to show the current condition. Now this is where we're going to come back and we're going to add a component. So I'm still inside of my weather overlap group. I'm going to go to plus and I'm going to use a component that is uh, pre-built inside of this thing. So uh, featured weather graph where we got it. Uh, let's see. Um, installed. Here we go. Now you can get a lot of weather components and stuff like that from um, the Play Store, from people sharing them. But I'm going to use the one that comes installed with KLWP, and that is going to be right down here, uh, the weather icon. This is the one that comes installed with KLWP. So let me tap on that. And we have a sun um, because that's the current condition, I imagine. Let me tap on that. This is the, old, the component. Uh, WI icon, we have night mode on, that way it'll show a moon at nighttime. Um, we have it scaled nicely. And you can tap on this and we can actually change, okay, we got we want current. So I'm going to tap on current and let it be. Um, we'll adjust this in a moment. Now, notice this is overlapping because we have these two items inside of an overlap group that we call weather. Well, what we can do right now is we can create a stat group. And I can take these two items right here because really what you want is you maybe you want the, the text first and the icon beneath it. So let's take these two items, let's cut. That means I'm removing them from there and I'm going to paste them inside of this stat group. That's going to give you that spacing where they never, they're never going to overlap now. They're inside of a stat group. And I tell you what, since we're inside of this stat group, let's go ahead and layer this and let's do vertically centered. That way the icon is centered. And now I'm going back to my overlap group. Um... I can call this stat group current because that is the current conditions. So not too much coding here. We're using a component. Um, and I'll tell you what, I want that icon a little bit bigger. So I'm going inside of that component that we added. And I'm just going to make that a little bit bigger. Just like that, you know, we have something that's centered. Um, they're stacking, so they're not going to overlap. And now what we want to do is I want the forecast for maybe the next three days down here beneath this. So I'm back inside the overlap group. I'm going to create another stat group and I'm going to call this stat group uh, one day. Basically, okay, let me, let me call it one day away. Uh, one day away. Basically tomorrow. You can call it tomorrow if you want to or whatever, but something you know is one day away tomorrow, same difference. So inside of this stat group here, I want to create a, um, let's see, Let's do another icon. Let's do um, the high low and let's put the date on that. So, okay, I'm gonna do the date first. So I'm gonna, I'm inside of my one day away. Well, what is the date going to be tomorrow? Well, today is, what is today's date? I don't know, but we're gonna find out real quick. Let me add some text. You can see it right there um, because I'm inside of my overlap group. We'll fix that momentarily. So text. Um, I want, let's get the date. And let me show you how to do this. So format a date into text. Here we go. Um, today's date, where are you at? How do I want to see it? I, I like seeing my dates like this, and you'll see why in a moment when I'm dealing with multiple That's today's dates. date. Um, I don't care about the, the year, so let's delete off the 2015. Notice it's taking it away. Let's take off that slash, and so now we're seeing 910. However, I want the date for tomorrow. So how do we do that? Well, if we scroll down here a little bit, um, we actually have all these other different things that we can mess with. The current day name, tomorrow's short day name. So current today is Friday, tomorrow's Saturday. It has something to do with this right here. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to delete this. I want to see Saturday, okay? Um, and let's do... We got Saturday and let's get tomorrow's date. 
So tomorrow's date, uh, where are you at? There's current day, number, month, short name. Okay, I guess, I guess I'll just go back to the one I originally had at the beginning. Where did you go? Okay, oh, right there, right there in front of my face. So I'm gonna delete the 2015 again. Tell you what, I'm gonna enter this down. So we got 910. Now, if we put comma, and I do A1D. A1D, what this did is this advanced it up. Okay, oh, I tell you what, I want to have the month first. I'm glad I saw that. So let me cut this. Let me paste it right there. And let me take this little slash. Let me cut it and let me paste it right in between there. So now, oops, I need to delete the comma and put the comma right there. So now it'll be 1010. Watch this. If I do two dates, because remember today is the 9th, one day away would be the 10th, two days away would be the 11th, three days away would be the 12th, and so forth. Now, let me advance this like 30 days and watch what's going to happen to the month and the day. If I do 30 days away, notice the month and the day is going to change. So this A30D, think of it as 30 days away from whatever today, today's current date is. So if I do zero here, um, today is the ninth. That's how you code um, and have it dynamically change. So I had the month slash the day. And then right now it's zero days away, but I want to do one day away. So tomorrow, Saturday, uh, the 10th of October. Very good. We got that. Now, again, that's not looking. It's overlapping. So I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and fix that right now. Um, let's take back to here. Um, quite honestly, what we're going to have to do here is we're going to have to really, like I said, the weather, I got an overlap group. Um, maybe what I should have done from the get-go is just do a stat group. But let me create a stat group, uh, da, 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 and let's take the current, which is a 62 and fair with the big sun. Let's take the one day away. Let's cut these things, and let's paste them inside of this stat group. Now that's going to space them out. See, there's that uh, Saturday 1010. And um, if I swap these two, notice it will swap the order. So remember the layering thing I talked about earlier in an earlier video? Um, and I want this to be vertically centered as well. So let me fix that. Now it's going to put that right there in the middle. Very good. So back to our stat group, one day away. All right, I got Saturday the 10th. I'll tell you what, I want to make that a little bit bigger. And notice I did put two pieces of text and they're entered here. Now, you might say, well, these are stacked. And that is true because I entered down in this formula. If you enter down, it will put it on a new line. Now, you might say, well, how do you center that? Because we didn't put this technically right here. This is not a stack group. I just entered down one line. Well, you can align and you can center it and bam, Saturday the 10th is centered right there perfectly. All right, so what else do we want to add inside of this one day away stack group. I want to see the icon for the forecast for tomorrow. So inside of here, I'm gonna go to plus, I'm gonna go back to component, and I'm gonna pick that same component from earlier, uh, the weather icon image. Notice it has an icon beneath there. Uh, this one day away stack group, I have it vertically, but I need to vertically center that as well. That way that image is centered nice. Look at that, see it's working out great. And now let's go back to items for one day away. Let's go to this icon image. And now what I want to do is I want to change it for not today's forecast, but for tomorrow's forecast. That's one day away. Notice icon comma one. It's, it's given the forecast for one day away. And let me zoom in on that. As you can see, it is going to be forecasted for rain tomorrow. And then there's also one more piece I want to put inside of here for one day away. I want to put the high temp and the low temp. All right. I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and go back to my text uh, here. Well, okay. I tell you, what, uh, I'll worry about something else in a second. Let's just add a new piece of text. I'm going to copy and okay. All right, I'm getting a little sidetracked. I'm going to go to my globals back in the root, and I'm going to create a new, new uh, font, global font, and I'll call this 
forecast. Basically, I want the forecast that I'm going to see in here. Now, you don't have to do this by any means, but I'm going to create a forecast font that's different than the other fonts. And I'm just going to pick something at random. Let's go with... Station. All right, let's roll with that. So I'm going to go back to my items. I'm going to go to my weather overlap group, which technically just should have been a stack group from the get-go. To further prove that, let me take this whole stack group, this whole thing you see here. Let me cut this. I'm going to go back to my root. I'm going to paste it. I don't even need this weather overlap group anymore because I have the stack group here. Because because everything inside of here is being stacked, I'm not overlapping anything. So really, we never needed the overlap group here because nothing's going to be overlapping inside of here. So I got my weather. I got my current conditions. I got my one day, which is this thing down here. Let me go change my text for Saturday, which is tomorrow. Let me apply the global font of forecast so there's that station font that I picked it did change it a little bit um, I'm happy with the size is that maybe up to about 50 and there's one more piece so and I talked about I wanted to see the high and the low tomorrow so I'm inside of the overlap group weather and then I'm inside of my one day away so I'm inside of here I want to copy Saturday 10 10 and I want to paste it because basically what this is doing when I copy and paste this I, It's creating a copy down there But I'm copying over the same font size and I'm copying over that global so I can you know I don't have to apply those changes and all I have to do is go inside of here and change my text So a little bit more coding here um, For high and low tomorrow. We're going to go to weather forecast and Now this is today's minimum temperature. This is today's max temperature so I'm gonna I'm gonna do high slash low. So I'm gonna do um, 82 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to delete. I don't care about seeing the Fahrenheit. However, remember this is tomorrow. Well, zero is today. If I change this to one, look, it did change. Check it out. Today's maximum temperature is predicted to be 82. Tomorrow, one day away, the high temp is predicted to be 64. It is, it is supposed to get quite a bit chillier um, uh, over the night and into tomorrow. So that's the max. Now I want to do a min. Now, unfortunately, what I'm going to have to do here is I'm going to have to open up Word because I cannot do a slash unless I... Well, did I have it copied and pasted? Oh, what the heck, I'm just going to open up Word. And all I'm doing here, I'm just doing this because you've probably heard me mention this in, in several other videos. Um, when I'm using my computer to do this typing, uh, some of my keyboard stuff on my Mac doesn't work quite, uh, quite right with Samsung SideSync. And that's the program that I'm using to show you the phone on the computer. So let me uh, copy this. Well, can I take all that and just drag it over? That would be great. No. Okay, I'll tell you what, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do... Dollar sign, weather forecast, the max one day away. Um, then I'm going to do my dollar sign. I don't know what the heck the degree symbol is, but I still want that. Come on. There we go. Copy. Is it going to do it? Yes, it is. Okay. Now, the whole point of me going to Word is for me to... Is that one spaced over? Yes, it was. Okay, slash. I can't do that slash unless I somehow copy or paste it. And now I want to see the max, comma, the min. So here's what we're going to do now. We're going to type in, it's basically the same code as this, WF, except I want to see the min for one day away. I'm going to close up my dollar symbol, and then I'm going to put that degree symbol there. And I want to copy and paste this back into KLWP. So control C. Let me select all of this stuff over here, and let me paste. Did that work? Perfect. So this is the maximum temperature for one day away, which is tomorrow. This is the minimum temperature for one day away. Check. Perfect. Looks great. I'm happy with that one. Now, here's the good news. I, I did mention earlier, I want to see this for 10 days. Oh, not 10 days. Good gosh. Three days. Well, instead of you having to do this, 
whole thing all over again. All we have to do is take this one day away stack group. Let's copy it. Let's paste it. Now we're going to fix this right here in a second. I want to see these go from left to right. Let me change this one to two days away. Two days away. And now all we have to do, instead of going back in here and adding all this stuff, I'm going to go to my text for Saturday 1010. Well, now I want to be, you know, two days away. So I'm going to change that to a two days away, two days away. Look, Sunday will be two days away. It will be the 11th of October. I need to also go back into my two days away stat group, change my forecast icon to two days forecast. Notice it changed it to two. And if I zoom in on this, we had rain on Saturday. It looks like Sunday is going to be partly cloudy or partly sunny, whichever you want to call that. And then we want to change this text for the max and the min. I want the maximum temperature that's predicted for two days away. I want the minimum temperature that's predicted for two days away. And as you can see, it is changing those. This is just some basic, this is basic coding. It does get a lot more advanced than this. But just like that, bam, I've created my two days away vertical stack group. And like I said, I wanted three. I'm just going to take this thing right here. I'm going back to my weather stack group. I'm going to copy. Actually, I could just paste the one in there, but I'm going to come down here and do the two. Let's call this three days away. And I'm going to do the same thing again. Three days away, I'm going to change my text for the date. Three days away should be Monday. So the Sunday is going to change to Monday. And this should now be the 12th. Perfect. Three days away. Very good. Back inside of here, let's change our image for the forecast. Let's put that, whoops, not five days away. Three days forecast, it changed to a three. It looks like we had the same forecast and actually we got the same max and min temperature predicted for Sunday and Monday. Um, sometimes you might say, well, oh, no we don't. I never changed that, my bad. So uh, this is the maximum temperature for three days away, maximum temperature, or excuse me, minimum temperature for two day, or three days away getting my numbers mixed up. But as you can see, everything, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And that's all about the one day away, two days away, three days away. We got the icons, one day away, two day away, three day away, and then the max and the min temps. Now, I want these going from left to right. So how can we fix that? What we're going to have to do here, right now, everything is inside of this stat group. Um, everything's vertically centered. I'm going to add another stat group. And I'm going to call this stat group forecast. Because I'm going to take all of this one day away, two day away, three day away stuff, and I'm going to put it inside of a stat group that I called forecast. So one day away, two days away, three days away. Let me cut them. Let me paste them. And nothing has changed yet. Everything's still vertically centered. And the reason why is because this forecast group is still inside of this uh, vertically centered but since I have all these stat groups here, all of these right here, if I change the layer of my forecast, so right now my forecast stat group, its layer is vertical left. Let's change this to horizontal center and bam. So here's what's going on. I have current, which is up here at the top. I have forecast, which is now forecast consists of all three of these vertically centered stack groups. However, I have these three vertically centered stack groups. I have the entire that entire group horizontally centered. That way you can see them horizontally instead of vertically. But what's going to happen here, these two, this stack group and this group of stack groups will always stay vertically centered and these here will always stay horizontally centered. And now what we can do with this, we can take uh, back in my root I can take this thing here, I can position it at the bottom if I'd like. Um, I can position this at the top. I can center it. Um, other things that we can do, I'm going to put it back at the top. We can take this layer and we can scale the whole thing. Look, it, everything's changing based on, in, in proportion. So I'm going to scale it back at 100. 
And let's not forget our friend from the beginning of uh, this entire series of us making a wallpaper. Remember that date and time? I had that layer to never. If I go back to always, that's why I got rid of it a while ago is because I didn't want this to be interfering with this. But these things are two different groups. Um, let's put this at the bottom. These two things work completely independently of each other because my date and time is this overlap group down here. My weather is this one up here. But um, there you have it. There is some more coding. And what we talked about in coding here was doing like one day away, two days away, three days away for icons, for temperatures. Um, what you can do now is if we go back and look at you know, some of those videos. Well, I've already closed that page. But the dynamically changing of colors, if you'd like, you could go and change the colors of each one of these high and low temps. Um, basically, you might say, well, if the temperature is above, I don't know, 60 degrees, maybe you want it to be red. If it's between 60 and 30, you might want it, be, you might want it to be blue. If it's less than 30, you might want it to be white because it's going to probably be ice on the ground. I don't know. So what you need to start doing now is start thinking about all these things I've talked about so far. Some of the coding, the dynamically changing of colors. Maybe you want to change your colors based on the temperature. You would still use some of that stuff from the earlier videos. However, you'd have to apply it to the temperatures. And uh, of course, if you have a question, leave a comment below and I'll be more than happy to help you with your coding. And it will make it a lot easier for me if you copy and paste what you've typed in. If something's not working right, copy and paste it, leave it in the comment section, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. In the next video that we're going to do, we're going to talk about animations of these things. I want these two things to show up but maybe I want them to show up by fading in or fading out, or I want them to slide in or slide out. But we're going to get into that. We're ready to start animating these two things so that we can start really getting our own customized look for our custom live wallpaper. But there you have it. This is uh, a little bit more on coding and working with a weather piece inside of KOWP. And that's it for this video. Hope it helped.